Hey everybody, welcome back to Leosophy. I got three more questions and I'm gonna jump right in. Question number one, deep fakes. Do you think they are used? Yeah. Um, I mean, depending on your interpretation of it, uh, well, for me, no matter what your interpretation of it, yeah. Um, I mean, we've seen people use it for entertainment purposes. We've seen people use it for uh, quote unquote revenge porn. Um, but, well, I don't know why I did a quote for that. That's totally what it is. <laughs> um, and we've, uh, uh, this is where it gets conspiratorial. You know, is it used for um, political things? Yeah, I'm 100% I'm convinced. I've seen multiple, multiple speeches by uh, world figures where, one, things don't really make sense regarding their, their faces and their words, and two, they definitely there's there's glitches there's like weird things that that are going on um yeah i'm i'm 100 percent convinced and and every now and again i'll see people point out things where it's very obvious that it's a jpeg artifact or they're in front of a zoom screen or something like that digital screen um green screen but more often than not it's when, when there is a, a flaw when there is something when somebody's hand goes through an object or or appears to be in front of and then behind something without moving. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm convinced that multiple speeches are deep fakes. I'm even convinced that some politicians um, have their doubles doing political things. Um, I, I've seen several instances of, of people with free hanging earlobes like mine, which you can hardly tell because of the beard, and, uh, and then, you know, they'll give a speech another day and they have an attached earlobe. Or they'll, they'll have a, a cleft in their chin one day and then not another. And, you know, people's faces change depending on certain circumstances day to day. Like some days I've noticed my uh, scar is very visible and other days it's not. But that's not the same thing. There's, no, there's never been a day where my earlobes have decided to become attached. There's never been a day where my chin decided to become a cleft chin. It doesn't happen. So though in those instances, yeah, there, there's something up. There's something up. Uh, next question. This is an update to an old question. Have you learned anything new about hybrid vigor? Um, no, I haven't. It is a, still a very mysterious thing. For anybody who's new to this uh, topic, uh, a long time ago, uh, it's good to see there's people still watching after a long time, asking the same some, some questions. Um, I was asked about hybrid vigor, and I pointed out that Hybrid animals tend to be tougher and hardier in many respects, and they tend to have exaggerated physical traits of both parents, um, mules being stronger than donkeys and uh, horses, um, hybrid plants usually being a lot more resistant to disease and faster growing, and then if you just look at a liger, I mean, they're just a monster compared to their parents. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're more fit at surviving, though. Um, ligers are a great example that they can't actually take down prey in the wild uh, more effectively. They would, they would all starve in the wild. But the strangest thing is, you know, nature abhors a hybrid. Hybrids tend to be sterile. It prevents, you know, the tree of life from just forking, oops, I hit my mic, uh, from forking back in on one another, um, which we're seeing now in certain other respects. But uh, the thing about hybrids and why this takes place, I still don't know. Um, I've done some research on the subject. I'm sure that there's information out there, but I have yet to come across a journal that properly and adequately describes it. So anybody who does know why hybrid vigor happens, not hybrid sterility, I get that, that's a safeguard, but why hybrid vigor happens, um, yeah, I'd love to know. Uh, let's see, third, sorry I couldn't answer it better. <laughs> um, let's see, last question. Okay, this is a much uh, lighter question. Um, do you use any products? for your beard. Um, yeah, actually, I, I haven't had a razor in like four months, uh, so I'm not bothered like trimming up the, the neckline or anything like, well, you can't even see it, that's why. But, uh, but I do, I did use oil. Um, I highly recommend that. It makes the, the growing stage, especially the, the day seven to 14 or whatever, uh, it's less of a nightmare. But uh, more importantly, it, it keeps everything from feeling like straw and being very unpleasant and dry and, and, you know, falling out. So the oil was great, but I just started using a balm. 
and so far I'm really happy with it. It's a, it makes me a lot less likely to uh, look completely insane. You know, I probably still look a little bit like a deranged hobo, but I'm not. You know, I'm not one that fell on harder times still. <laughs> so yeah, highly recommend Beard Balm. I will not name brands because I feel like I don't want to like advertise or anything. Not that. Not that I'm like getting sponsors or anything like that. Like, you know, this is still a, a very small um, grassroots kind of channel. But I don't know. It just feels weird to name brand names when, especially since I've only tried one. But Beard Balm is great. Highly recommend it. I mean, I'm glad I bit the the bullet and got some. So yeah, uh, like, share, subscribe, keep asking questions. Bye.